The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Uh, today is the uh, Monday, 11th of December, 2018. It's the weekly Niantic User Group meeting. Um, I shall apologize in advance if there's a, a bit of background noise. Uh, basically, um, I'm actually uh, in the car, out on the road. Um, but I, we, we didn't have last week's webinar because I was ill. And this week, we've already got arrangements to go to visit clients. So rather than cancel, um, we've got uh, somebody else driving. I'm in the passenger seat. And uh, yeah, let's let's see what we can do. Let's, uh, let's see if we can hold a webinar at 70 miles an hour on the motorway. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, 10 out of 10 for dedication. Okay, so as always, if we have any questions or queries, ideas, uh, then please feel free to um, raise your hand. Uh, we'll get the mics open and, uh, and yeah, we'll uh, see what we can uh, accomplish today. As I say, apologize if the background noise is a little more than normal, uh, but hopefully it's, it, well, it's obviously better than not, not being here at all. Okay. It's actually really quiet. There, there is no background noise. It's quite amazing. Oh, oh, very good. Oh, well, that's that's a bonus. Uh, obviously, there is for me, but I have moved moved the microphone a, a little closer than normal. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, Kevin has a question there. Yeah. I'm going to say we've got a question already. Just before we dive straight into question uh, questions, I will uh, bring you up to date on on uh, the updates that are currently in progress. Um, there is the major updates going to the base classes of the Chilcat. Uh, uh, Wendy has been working on them quite a lot uh, and continues to do so, although not quite at the moment. As I say, she's driving at the moment. But um, yeah, Wendy is working on the Chilcat classes. I hope maybe by the end of the year, by the end of December, maybe early first week in January, that all of the base classes, that's 90 odd of them, will all be complete and wrapped. Um, at that time, but I will make sure everybody's more than aware, so I'll give plenty of warnings in advance. At the time when all the base cl classes are wrapped, we're going to be looking at making the Chilcat wrapper uh, gold because all of the Chilcat functionality will be wrapped. And then the task classes that we do are on top of that. So we will be looking at making that uh, a gold release, which does have implications because the price will go up to its gold price, which is, I think it's $400 rather than $320. But I don't want anybody be, to be caught unaware. So we will make plenty of announcements. Uh, I'll give a month's notice, uh, or, or, well, you know, so many weeks notice, so that everybody is um, more than aware. But I don't believe in catching anybody out. So those, uh, that's the Chill Cat wrapper. That's actually in progress uh, now. Um, the report control is also having a, a, an update. A project is, is forcing this, but it's, a, it's good. It's the, the updates we spoke about regarding the uh, insert change delete buttons and calling the forms. So we're making big inroads into that. And you could well see an update within uh, the next week or so on that. Um, so watch this space. So the report control is getting quite a bit of work at the moment, which is good. And last but not least is, as well as those, work has actually been started on the multi-DLL at last, uh, which I know we've we've always obviously already done some in our weekly webinars in the past, but now we're actually flushing it into the rest of the suite so that... Um, but basically, it makes it much easier to upgrade your, your code jock version or license, your, your attributes for a multi-DLL uh, uh, solution. So we've covered it. I won't harp on about it now, but we've covered it a few times in the past. And yes, basically, um, you, as promised to John, you should see those before the end of the year. And that is still hopefully the intention. So, yeah, watch this space. OK, so Kevin has a question. So let's... Uh, Let's open the mic to Kevin and see what the, the question is. Hi, Kevin. Yes. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, good morning. Uh, yeah, there's no noise, so whatever, you must be driving in a Mercedes or something, nice and quiet. Uh, BMW, actually, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we recently converted our, one of our clearing applications to 
use PNG files throughout the entire project for icons, and they don't show up in the calendar. Does the calendar control support PNGs as their icons? Now, when you say, well, CodeJock as a rule, CodeJock supports PNGs, but what you can't do is compile those into your application. The only things which can be compiled into the application at the moment are the uh, .icos. So um, that might be catching even you out. Even though, I have, even though I have Pragma link statements to link the PGNs? Yeah, no, they, they still won't be. Uh, the internals of the class uh, don't uh, try and bring out the actual resources for JPEGs or GIFs or PNGs. They're only the uh, .icos are uh, allowed to be compiled in. Uh, it's something I could look at. Um, yeah, it's something I could look at. There could be a secondary um, question regarding PNGs in the calendar. Now, when you say on the calendar, do you mean literally the little icons that display maybe for a meeting or reminder or a custom icon for that matter correct right um i've never tried them with pngs uh, if truth be told and i've never tried them with small pngs something like 16 by 16 which is probably the for, for the calendar it wants to be the optimal size um correct. i will i will make a note and I will try and report back uh, next week's webinar. But I know the at present, the compiling in of resources is only ICO uh, compatible. It has been for um, quite a few years, you know, so literally 10 years now. Uh, that's not to say it can't be expanded. If, if it's technically possible, I will, of course, have a go. But at present, it's only it's only ICOs. But you're you're saying that's a code jock restriction or just something you've never changed in your or investigated? Uh, I wouldn't. wouldn't I, I'm not sure at the moment. I, I know from my point of view, when I first did the uh, compiling of compiling in of resources, I only covered dot icons. Uh, behind the scenes. Uh, each one of the, it could be the calendar, it could be the command bar or the ribbon report control. Um, they use uh, an built-in CodeJock image manager and you've got a, a basically a load from resource and we do that uh, for the icos and you've got a load bitmap load jpeg load image type uh, type uh, method and i know there's explicit code in there for like i say for the icos if they're compiled in or not and and the other files so whether i can it's early early doors. I think I might have tried it, didn't have much luck, and then basically left it because obviously time was of the essence in the early days, getting the uh, getting the products out and the facilities out. That's not to say it can't be looked at again now. After all, uh, be it a PNG, a bitmap, it doesn't really matter. It's just a compiled in resource. It's a matter of getting that resource and having it as a format that the code jock methods allow to be loaded via that. I should imagine they do, but I would have to investigate. So it's a bit right. of both. It's a bit. It's a bit of both at the moment. I know I took a look, but I'm talking ten years ago. So I took a look, didn't have much joy, and walked away from it. Happy to go back to it, and I will report back next week on that. Mm -hmm. But um, I also need to make sure that the Kojok methods are there to support those actual commands as well. Back to icons, just for the calendar. Right, sorry. Right. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, All right. Well, yeah. I mean, um, the compiled in icons are not just the calendar. They're in the, the the entire suite. That is the status for the 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 entire suite for the the command bars, calendar, report control, uh, task panel. So all of them basically. Okay. Well, then the, that's good to know. I mean, I the good didn't news is too much time tracking us down. Thing like they should have worked, and I was confused. No, I mean you could use PNGs, and but you can ship them um, externally. Um, the I think the shortcut bar example does include an example of just that, but um, but they would have to be external. So all of a sudden, then you'd be saying maybe having a subfolder of images or you know or icons, which are your PNG files. So you could work, you know, at least test it 
in the short term to see if the images paint better. I mean, what's the driving force behind switching from PNG to ICO, especially for the uh, for the calendar, seeing as they are so small? Is there a particular reason? No, my clients who have some better graphics and stuff, and uh, they just chose PNGs as the uh, as the format they went with. Okay. Okay. So, well, just, it was just a, a know, those were the last ones that weren't working. Okay. Yeah, well, short term, you could ship them in a in a, a particular path, and then in your template have it so that they are specified or not in the template or maybe in your embedded code, but have them load the PNGs from uh, a folder and they would work. Yeah, but that could be quite slow. Um, you would be putting little... you would be putting an overhead on it, especially um, if there was a lot of loading moving back and forth and so on. Definitely, you know, any file I.O. is going to come uh, at greater expense than memory I.O. Yeah, I, I think what I'll probably do is just uh, convert those five PNGs that we're using back to with their new images as icons, and they won't know the difference. And <laughs> eventually, it'll work yeah. out, but they're more concerned with the images showing. Yeah, yeah, the, I, I would probably. Is it? I take it that the five you're probably referring to, the, like the the reminder, the uh, meeting, private, those type of things. Uh, actually, no. We don't use any of your custom icon, any of your icons. We oh, have okay. appointment follow up and tickets. That's the you know, time part. I understand. We, Sorry, right? We, um, the, 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 we don't allow them to have meetings, recurrence, private, any of that. We just do away with those. Right. Well, as, as promised, I will I will take a look for next week. Um, the good news is, if it's possible, because all of those particular settings are in our base class, then if I fix it for one, I technically fi fix it for the whole suite. So, mm -hmm. not, not fix, that's probably the wrong word. Enhance. If I enhance it for one, I enhance it for the whole suite. So, um, yeah, I shall take a look and um, report back next week. I want to make a, a quick... Well, as always, appreciate it. Oh, Thank you. no problem, no problem. I'll make a quick note before I forget. It's um, quite scary I'll, uh, how much room I've got in the front of there. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, yep, got, got that, no problem. So do we have, um, do we have any other questions? No, nope, all seems quiet so far. Does seem quiet. Does seem very quiet. Um, John, mine's on the PDF. Oh, uh, ah, yes, yes, you did send me a yeah. sent me a, a message. Well, I was going to say there's two things which, John, I, I promise you that uh, uh, sample app, and I haven't forgot that is. Um, I'm going to actually do it in the car on the way down. After. Oh yeah, yeah. So, um, so I will send it across. Um, basically. We, we never like to hide anything. John's reported a, an issue typical started happening at a site and doesn't happen on the dev machine, which we've we've all experienced and so on. But it's just to do with a report control and um, a, a checkbox. And we're using edit in place and for some reason we're getting GPF. So the, the plan of attack is to create a small demo app, uh, which it takes all the exact settings of the application, so on and so forth, but it will be a little standalone app. I'll send that across, and if we can try that on the same site, and at least we can see, does that work or not? And, and uh, it's it's just a first step in the investigation, really. Uh, but you mentioned the, the, the PDF. Now, there was a particular other tool you sent me. Can you, I'll just bring it up. Can you send me, uh, can you remind me of it? Um, yeah, what was it? Let's see. It was, oh, Sorax Soft, S O R A X Soft.com. Yeah. Okay, so now just while that's loading, basically, obviously, you're probably all aware we, we do a, a PDF wrapper, but it doesn't wrap just one engine, but it wraps a, a few engines. I think it's five or six the media and our, our media wrapper also does uh, takes the same approach uh, 
So the idea being, if you ever see um, a PDF uh, viewer, like John seeing this one, um, as long as it's got a com interface and, and it's stable, I will put it through its test before it gets added to the actual main product. But as long as it's stable, and it, I can already see here, relative free runtime, because we also want to check it's going to be cost effective for our users uh, and so on. Then what we'll do is we'll take a look, check we can get a, an, in, a, an interface into it, which looks like here we can. And um, I'll add it to the PDF wrapper as uh, just one of the options. I think the, the others on there at the moment are there's a couple of Viscom uh, engines. One is their image engine, which actually supports PDF. And one is an actual PDF wrapper they do. Uh, I've had good success with both of those, to be fair. Uh, we cover the tracker uh, ActiveX. We cover the uh, Adobe. Obviously, that's a good old tried and tested one. But there are certain uh, the, the certain implementation implementation uh, things to take into account with the Adobe. A lot of people have Adobe installed by default, and then they don't want you going putting a different version on if you want to use a specific version or and so on and so forth for tools. So it is better to, for what I found in my applications, is to use a specific uh, PDF engine Use the wrapper template, of course, to talk to it, and then it's nice one common interface. Um, and yeah, that's that's the idea. So, so we've got the uh, this is the PDF. I take it. Yeah. This one just just looked pretty um, cost effective. I think it was 120 or something euros. Not too bad. Okay, com objects, use languages, yeah. Also wanted to see if we can get um, reg free com. I mean, that's that's a Brucey bonus, of course. Uh, sorry, English phrase there, but that, that's a bonus if we can get the reg free com <laughs> settings for it. But um, just looking at some of the functions there, it does have search for uh, uh, search functionality, which some of them don't. So there's only a couple, I think, will actually have that. Uh, so that's good. We've got Zoom. We support Zoom rotating of pages this does seem quite a even though it's only a brief list that does seem pretty powerful yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna sign up so yeah, yeah i will yeah, take a look it, at that at, um, see the good thing is i'm um, thinking uh, thinking aloud here but we've we've done the class we've done the methods we've done we've even done the example app so everything's done and we have a common set of methods so you to open a file it's called open file to print a file it's called print file and to search or i think it's find it might be called find or find text so all of these methods are written and what happens behind the scenes is it has to look at the uh, template settings to say what engine are you using and it issues the relevant command to the engine so if it's adobe it might be one command if it's uh, viscom it's another command so to add extra um compatibility for the likes of this is really simple of course that's the famous last words but um <laughs> the the basically it is just a case of let's just uh, put that onto my bar for now it's only on the laptop um what i will do is uh, uh, take a look at this it's, it's nice and simple uh, i'll put it into my test app which i've demonstrated at the dev cons a few times i'll use that same test app to try the commands in here as soon as we see them commands working they just get added to the class and the whole process can be done in very little time you know one two hours mm -hmm. that type of thing so um so yes um consider it done as long as it passed some um uh, some tests you know the uh, reliability tests and so on and so forth uh, right but as long as it does those I'm happy to add it and, and should be relatively fast as well. So I will uh, might even have a couple of hours before the meeting in the morning. I shall take a look. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, I started to look at it and I was able to get an object back and I was able to load PDF. But there theirs is a little trickier. They, you have to make a viewer window or something and then attach it to the window and use some handles. And I was getting lost in the... Uh, okay. Okay. Well, there's there's always ways of means. Um, 
the obviously the, we all use the cold jock stuff and that's why we're here <laughs> and and, and, uh, and our chill cat stuff and so, but there's plenty of little tricks and tricks of the trade what go on behind the scenes believe me um right yeah. which, what, what, what makes it nice and easy for you is there's little tricks goes on behind the scenes like changing of um the, the parentage via API calls so we can let you continue using the Clarion hide and disable commands uh, on a control but we'll take ultimate charge of it via um, creating our own group and then changing the uh, the parentage via APIs taking it out of Clarion's control so you get to carry on using uh, Clarion properties but we'll actually control them at a higher level um, that's just one of the common tricks we use to uh, to take charge of things quite a lot in this suite. So, had it if, if it wants a little viewer, we can automatically create the viewer, maybe have it hidden if we need to, and then remap it onto where our viewer is painted. That type of thing. So, there's always ways oh, and means. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate it. Give give it a go. It looks yes. it looks pretty nice. Cost wise, it was the least expensive one I've seen. Yeah, and it's uh, it does look just the features I saw then um, quite powerful because not all of them uh, support the text. For example, the Viscom, I think, and this is only from memory, the Viscom PDF engine might do, but the Viscom Image engine doesn't support text search. It's really seen the PDF as nothing more than image pages that time. So I can right. understand why on on that particular facility uh, on that on that particular uh, OCX why it doesn't uh, but I like the look of this one so far um, for its function so yeah we'll take a look um, I, John give me drop me an email tomorrow but uh, I'll see what I can do on it yeah click click on the store um, link a menu up there just so you can see the pricing on it okay yeah so active X if it will load review print can you see the screen It hasn't come. Ah, are we running into our first? Yeah. Just okay. So I'm I'm on the store here, and I can see the um, PDF ActiveX with view and print support. Oh, now we run into problems. Sorry, guys. Back again. Maybe it's gone quiet. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, there's every chance we're losing them here. Yeah. And we were going so well. Yeah. Attendees, there's 13 of us. Hello. Okay, getting better. The HMRC code for John. Hello. Can anyone hear us? You made it. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm here, I'm here. We were just going to wait to see if yeah. you came back. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, won't be a second. Okay. Andy, where'd you go? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? There you are. Yes. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Can you see the page? Oh, my days. This is a... Uh, we are struggling a little. Oh. <laughs> Keep uh, coming and going here. Eh? Oh, well, well, we shall see if we can get a tiny bit better, and if we don't, then, well, it's it's lost. And Bijan's got some questions as well. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, it's on one bar of 3G. There he is. Okay, sorry everybody. Really sorry Andy. about this. The screen refresh. Yes, I, I I do apologize. It, like I say, it, it's better than no webinar at all, but I do apologize. Yeah, the screen finally refreshed and everything, so you've definitely gotten to a better spot. Yes. Okay. Um those interested, we're just going past Leicestershire. There you go. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we can see uh, what looks like this price here. 96 euros, is it? 90, uh, yeah, 96. See, that's, that's not bad. Not bad price at all. Um, yeah. No, I was saying that most of the ones I see are three to $500. It's the same type of thing. One of one of the other engines we've been looking at uh, wrapping, but it's really the, the the cost has been putting us off is the Foxit engine. Now that's really powerful, ActiveX compliant, so on. So all all a very a very good offering, but their licensing and their costings are just crazy. So of course you need to then check is it cost effective to actually add it to the product because if no one's going to use it, there's very very little point in doing so. Yeah. So, well, well, we will take a look at this now, um, and I will I will report back. And John, I'll, I'll drop you a message, and then obviously next next web next week we're at the office, so normal service will be resumed next week. Um, <laughs> okay. Now we've got uh, Bijan got some questions, so I'm just going to open the microphone up and make sure we can try and cover those before we lose any connectivity again. Okay. Uh, Bijan, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi, Andy. How Hi. Yes, I can hear you. Hi, Andy. Hi, John. How are you guys? Hi. Good, hey, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so, yeah, I've got, just wanted to report back to you uh, um, on the date lookup. Yes, it does. It does seem to be an, a, a new, ver, a new uh, OCX feature, right? Because I, I had to uh, upgrade to 18.6 for the date lookup. It wasn't working with my 18.3. Well, the, the, the no, date lookup. Yeah, the date lookup isn't a new feature of 18.6. The basically the date lookup isn't an actual cold jock um, feature. They they provide the calendar and they provide a, a date uh, a, a date picker. Uh, so, for example, let me just open up the example okay. here. Okay, won't be a second. Okay, so that's in there. Let's open that up. Let's open that example up. So the date lookup is um, an extra template that we've added. Sorry, an extra option that we've added a window control to our template. And all that does is provide you access to a date picker, but in a lookup type 
style and then returns oh. you either a single date, uh, a, ra- a date range, or multiple dates via a queue. So, oh, let me just do that. Um, so it's not cold jock specific um, at all. So what that might have been in, in your particular application, it could well have been, I, I've just, for, for those who are wondering what we're, we're going on about, there's um, just on an example application for uh, Vision, uh, do, do, it uses a couple of templates, but one of them includes the date lookup. Now, for that lookup, in the app, in the demo application, it's set to use RegRecom, and it's got a license code compiled into it. It what might happen in your application is, do you have if you're using RegRecom, do you have the correct OCX in the application folder, and do you have the license, the, co- the calendar license, compiled into the application? I would look at those two first. Yes. Yeah. No, I mean I got it working, but uh, but by just changing the the template, eighteen point six and then right. eighteen point six. That shouldn't I mean, have made any that's difference. That's how it got it to work. Right. Oh, really? I don't know how that. Maybe the manifest. Yeah, it could have been the manifest. Maybe it was out of sync it, or something. It's more likely to be something like the the OCX not being present or uh, the manifest not generated because you've not got the registry. Okay, that might have been, yeah. yeah. But, but I got no. it working, so let's not worry about that. I, I was just, I have a quick question on um, on printing. Um, like, what do you, if somebody would generate really nice support control, uh, like Windows, uh, what if we wanted to print that window? Uh, do you have any suggestions for printing that window? So we're, talk, we're talking on. about a report control printing. Well, the template uh, does. Oh, not even even just yeah, yeah, report control. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the the template does include um, a print right. button, which you can add to the window. It's a window control. It the class includes okay. a print method, but it's very much um, and there's a print preview as well. But it is a what you see is what you get. So so for example. Oh, I see. Uh, just for everybody else. If yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That that's the date lookup that we were mentioning uh, a minute ago if people are, are wondering but that that's not code job specific that you could technically use an old 15.31 and that would still work so that that's been around for a long oh, time okay. maybe my uh, manifest my manifest would have been a would be the could, have been the problem yeah. quite possible there to be fair um yeah. so let me just quickly show you the print uh, preview and we'll do it on a on the the on a the standard example application that ships with the demo. Uh, sorry, ships with the template, and we'll add uh, we'll have the uh, print preview to the track bar uh, sample. Okay, let's just upgrade this one. Okay, so we've got this and a very quick compile, and at least we'll just open up the uh, the track bar sample. Oh, I just noticed. Dropbox, that'll be, um, let's just turn Dropbox off, that won't be helping. Well, we're just waiting for this. I take it the rest of the the the, the sample application worked well. Worked exactly. Yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, everything's great. Everything's working great. Um, just while it's compiling, I have one more my my last question. Yeah. Um, I did get an email from my client about the uh, the quick, quick QuickBooks Online, uh, so they do need that payment uh, option. So. Yes. Uh, we're for sending payment information to QuickBooks. Invoices, I think uh, you, you mentioned you already have. The, so, the invoices um, are there and the linked payments are there because in QuickBooks, and it's very similar in, in all of the uh, the online accounting, actually. Um, when, say, for example, 
uh, QuickBooks post um, uh, to post an invoice, then what what uh, you have there is you have the method. You pass it a group structure with the invoice header. You pass it uh, one of the parameters is a queue, which is your invoice lines. Uh, there's a, a queue of tax information, and there's a queue of linked transactions, which can be credit notes and payments. So you can do all your linkage, and all of that is supported at the moment. But the actual sending of a payment and allocating against an invoice isn't supported yet. So that will uh, that will have to be added. Um, no. Oh, no, no I don't think I need that actually. To be honest, uh, okay, so what I need is, is when they do actually record the payments in our system against the invoice. So I do have a link, obviously, between the the two tables. Right. Um, so when we're sending the invoice, we already know which uh, payments are associated with it. We have the records. We can actually load those in the queue. But will you that still have to? Will that work with the current version? You have to still. Um, no, I think because what you'd be doing is you'd be linking in a, against, in your system, you've got the invoice and that might be record one and you've got the payment and that might be record two, you know, and you've said number two goes against number one. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's allocated. But in QuickBooks, you can't say, okay, now record one happens to be record 700 and record two happens to be record 701 or whatever. Well, basically what you can't do is say, um, here's the invoice and here's a payment, but not have the payment val and not have the payment present in QuickBooks. So if you're going to link it to a transaction, it's I think the business rules would kick in and say I can't find the linked transaction. So you would still need to have the the, the details up there. Mm, I see. So okay. I shall uh, I shall investigate that and uh, add it to our sample application because it's quite a common um, uh, quite quite a common thing. But you can, as yeah. I say, you can download. So if you add a if you add in QuickBooks invoice one and invoice two and a payment allocated against both those invoices then you should be able to download that information and see what uh, the the detail was of the invoices and also how they were paid eg they were paid via this same this particular payment so the the interface definitely supports it all we've just got to wrap the bit which is the group mm -hmm. structure of the payment but again because all the work and the transmission is done it's that's relatively simple as well um, to add that. No, what if what if what if they process the credit card payment in QuickBooks against an uh, open invoice, and now we want to bring that in to our system? That would come down is when it, you do the, the download invoice. As you bring down download it invoice, it would bring you down the queue of linked transactions against it. And that works the with the, with the current version the way it is. Does it work yes. right now? Yep, it does. Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, so let's take. Okay, so just checking out, we've got our mobile signal and we, we are dropping off a little. So a new merit scale track bar. We can see plenty of blocks and examples. So we've got a track bar. Now, if you wanted to print that, the class supports um, what you see is what you get printing. So if we just have a look at our track bar, oh, just click there, track bar. I think it was that scale, the numeric scale. And if we go to the window controls for the report control, it knows there's a report control on the window. So now it can talk to it. And we've got a, we've got a print and we've got a print preview. So I'm gonna add both of those. That's a print button. And we should have a preview somewhere. There's also a page set up as well. Um, oh, sorry, that's me. Pressing the wrong thing. Right. Okay, yeah. So let's bring that in. Right click actions and link it to the report control. It probably is, already is, but we just have to check. So, yes. It's linked to the report control. Okay. We'll okay. check the next. So it's similar to, to the calendar, yeah. It's exactly. To the calendar exactly the same. The and there's some, yeah. there's some template settings where you can say what the header is and what the footer is, and do you want I it see. landscape? In fact, let's take a look at one of these, and I'll just check the print settings to say oh, we we want this to be landscape by default. 
trying to remember where these settings are actually. Oh, they're not there. Maybe they're on the print. Won't be a second. Oh, yes, they're on here. So show printer dialog, and we want it to be landscape. Uh, you can force black and white, uh, just the contrast. We've got some margins and some header information. So Awesome. Test. Great. That's for the that print. For me. We'll take a quick look for the preview as well. Oh. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, landscape. Left, center, right. <laughs> Just to to show the type of settings. Great. Okay, so on our track bar numeric, we should have two buttons there. If I just do the preview, and we can see there's a block four there and a block 37 down on the bottom row. So there, there is your what you see is what you get and we've got our left center right that type of thing so it's up to you really yourself on how you want to basically do anything with that you can put titles on there i think you can put date and time there's some built-in it's all in the code jock help but there are some built-in um uh, like tokens if you will for the the current date the current time uh, that you can actually do i think it's ampersand t for time something like that um but that is about as much control as you get over it. There's a few properties. Again, you can do all that. There is a, a set, um, I think it's set property. I think it might be set printer property. Something, one of the methods we've got. But worst case scenario, oh, it's print manager, set print manager property. So you could do in that and then you'd be setting a property directly within the print manager. And that's not just for the, oh, it's not print manager. Sorry, I'm thinking of paint manager. Yeah, it might be paint manager, but ultimately that same type of approach is used not just for report control; it's used for all of the products. Perfect. Now this 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 is good enough. I mean, I I know it would be it would have been nice if we could have like wrapped to the uh, like next page for the next a day, you yes, know. Yes, I, I know but, what you mean. But you know, I, I you can't get you can't have everything, you know. <laughs> you know. No. I, I mean, understand. you would well, have to look at some nice. settings for like Zoom because you can see it's coming off the page on the right. Yeah. So that's where we would want to really play about with the actual Zoom settings. If we were doing this in a live application, we would want to uh, make sure that it wasn't flowing off the page and, and, and that type of approach. Uh, no, it's good enough. It's, this is good enough for what, what I was looking for as far as feature. Uh, if, uh, if nobody else has any questions, uh, I, I, I would I would like to see um, um, the you know the the Google Drive or the Dropbox uh, features in Chillcat, but if there is a recording from previous times, I can go back to those. I mean I don't I don't want to take up the, the webinar's time on that if if it's already something you've covered. Uh, sorry, just won't, won't be one second. Can uh, can't look at. Sure. If there are no other questions or if there's enough time. Hey, so, so I've got the uh, somebody else trying to message me at the same time. Uh, um, so we, what, what what do we want to look at? The Google Drive. Is it Google Drive or Dropbox? Google Drive probably. That's that's what I'm interested in. But if the, there are recordings uh, of of your webinars that covers that, I I don't want to take up the main uh, for the, the Chilcat time. task class. Um, the Basically, uh, on the chill, chill cap, there's two sides. There's the base classes, which allow you to really connect to literally anything and everything. I've yet to come across something that I can't connect to on it, genuinely. Um, but they, that's using a, 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 a basically a, a, a range of ta base classes all at the same time. The task classes are, are do that do just that for you they they automate the task of connecting to to connecting to google to connect, connecting to quickbooks or zero and so on and so forth so they're always going to be ever expanding because 
we get asked for new things all the time. Um, for Google, the connectivity what's there at the moment is um, Google Tasks, Google Calendar, and although it's not in the demo app, the Google Documents. Um, I've not done the Google Drive, but you know that can be bumped up the list if it's a pressing issue. It will be it'll be January now though because we've got more than enough committed to beforehand. Um, but that that can be bumped up the list to connect to Google Drive. I can show you the uh, the chill cat if that helps, which is the uh, Dropbox. If there, yeah, if there are no other questions, I like I said, I don't. Want, I, I'm sure I could, there are recordings of this. You um, know, and, no, and I mean yes, we're live and your YouTube. Yeah, we've mentioned yeah. it, but that's fine. I'll just quickly right. and at least open up the example. It should be on. Uh, it should be sure. on this machine. Sure, sure. Let me take a quick look. Okay, this bit of a, a rough and ready example, if you will, but let's try it anyway. So, can we get a connection? We can. So you've got a method called connect, which is a lot. Of, it's the same approach we're doing with all of our task classes. So for the Google class, uh, if you want to connect to the calendar, it's the Google task class, and then it's connect underscore calendar to connect to the tasks. It's connect underscore tasks. In the QuickBooks class, it's connect. In Zero class, it's connect. So in Dropbox, it's connect. We're trying to keep the exact same approach in each of the classes. So the idea is, once you've learned one, you really have got a good understanding of how to use the next one. The download, now this will only show you uh, the raw content, the demo app, it really hasn't got much anything, much else padded out. So there's, um, we can see, talking to Dropbox, and this is what's coming back. So we can see that there's a couple of files in here uh, yeah, there's a logo. I think this is just a, a test account actually within Dropbox. It's not the live account. So we can see what each file's got an ID and then you've got the attributes of that particular file. Now, the, the same can be said. Let's just take, for example, the QuickBooks. Okay, just quickly connect here. Gonna want me to... Um, Authenticate, so yeah. The reason I'm going to show this is so you can get an appreciation of what goes on. And it'll be the same for the Google Drive and for the Dropbox and basically all of the things that we do. So, yeah, we're connected. Come off that. Come off that. Now, I'm connected. I'll uh, query, select star from customers. The customers will come back in a JSON format, just the same as we've just got with our uh, Dropbox. It's very similar. Uh, Google's the same. They're, they're all the same, really. Um, but while that technically gives you everything you want, and we could take a copy of that entire content, so we'll even show the JSON thing in a second. So let me just take a copy of this. I think I should have showed something a little smaller. Okay. Now what we do behind the scenes is we take that answer. If you want to download the customers, we give you a method called download underscore customers. Same with the Dropbox and so on. Download underscore files, download underscore folders, things like that. So... We do that same download, but what it actually does is it brings it down into a predefined queue and populates that queue with all the various different elements, which means all you've ever got to do is just talk to that queue. Um, you can, it, it has a structure for you, you just define it from a, a type structure, you download into it, you can manipulate it and you can re-upload from it and you've got all the data nice and easily done for you same approach so you can see from that we actually end up with a nice queue all via the class so the drop the reason i mentioned that is the dropbox works in exactly the same type approach that, that download yes it brings down the the raw 
uh, structures, but behind the scenes we'll also populate the queues for you so you've got everything uh, ready done for you. Makes it so much easier to work with for, for you guys. If you did ever need to work with it raw, then what you could do is do your download, just like you saw there, go into the JSON class, which is all we do within the, the, the task class. So there you go. There's the, uh, the QuickBooks download a second ago. I'm going to actually set that. Have I got a set? Load from display. Okay. So that should be loaded. So what I should be able to do now is look at a part of this and interrogate a part of it. I don't need to put it into any Clarion structure. So if I wanted to get to where the very first one, we can see here we've got customer. It's got a square bracket, so it's an array. And I'm going to get the first one. So I want to get the customer first element, which is zero based, dot taxable. And if I get that, oh, have I typed it wrong? It's actually quite hard to see. Do you have a space? Uh, do you have a space after t? t is it? Oh. No, it should have been. It's a dot. Oh, dot. Okay. I'm just wondering where it's actually loaded. It. Let's just. No. Let me load. Lo make sure it is loaded from there. So, say this example here. So. I want to get to the account dot name. There you go, it's Banana Republic. So I'm so I've got this JSON content. I put it into the which I've returned back from Dropbox or Google Drive, uh, QuickBooks Zero, Sage. Doesn't really matter. Uh, Google Calendar gives you the JSON content uh, as a response. We put that straight into the JSON object via one line, and then we can manipulate it. So there's, we've just said that's banana. We've just got banana republic, but we could also go and change that to say Clarion Live. Now let's go and update that string, and that's just changed the JSON content in memory to Clarion Live. And again, we've done it not using right. any. Class, sorry, not using any uh, Clarion groups or Clarion structures, queues, no derived code. You're just manipulating the raw um, JSON in memory, which makes it fully flexible. It doesn't really matter what's passed to you. You can just, as long as you know what syntax uh, you really want to uh, interrogate and, and uh, an update, then you can do it. Yeah, that's cool. So really I can't, can't really show much more on this on the on the uh, not the Google Drive because we've not wrapped that yet. We've got the Google connection wrapped. The tasks uh, should be in here actually. Um, on the tasks, uh, Google tasks are they? Yeah. So here we've got Google tasks. We will connect into it, and then download. And I haven't got any. Oh, that's very good. Yep. There aren't, aren't any. Let me actually see if we can insert one. Today's date, the 11th of the 12th. Task one. Okay, so now we've just actually talked to Google. We've updated uh, Google and put a, a, a task in there. And I can tell you the actual methods from your point of view would be connect underscore tasks and update, uh, I think it's update task. That's it, update underscore task. Oh, I see. So it's as simple as that, just two lines. The only thing you would have to do is prime up a group in between. And that's all that is really done there. I've just put a, a, a screen onto the group elements. Oh, I see. For me, the, 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 I guess the order of importance would be, the, of course, the, the QuickBooks payments first. Yeah. And then, 
you know, definitely helped you. for me at least. So. Well, as, a, as, a, as I say, the um, just to show. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, uh, there's a lot of features there. Oh, the, I, I, I know I get carried away with it, but the the uh, the chill cap product really is something else. It's so powerful. I've had, had to look at um, delivery interfaces, you know, logistic logistics interfaces. Again, nice and simple. Um, even people just giving me ad hoc queries. Can, can it talk to this? And the answer is yes. I've yet to come across one where we uh, we couldn't do. So, if we was to look at the Google uh, Task class, just so you can see the type of things which we've got. So, NYSCK Task. Here's the Google ones. Oh, it's opened it twice. Okay. Uh, here's our group structures, so you can see uh, to do with attachments, attendees, conferences. Uh, there's our task list, so we can see uh, as well as tasks, you can actually set up your own task list within Google. But the main ones you want to do are, you would do connect tasks and then prime up the group and call update task item with the parameter of just let me move because i've got an extra screen here for go to webinar uh, with the um, the group primed up any linked uh, items to it and then the action insert change or delete and that's it really really simple but it's that same awesome. approach for all of them for, for the calendar and it will be for the google drive it will be you know, update folder, update file, insert, you know, that kind of thing. Great. Okay. I'm get mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's gone extremely dark here, and I find it very hard to uh, to see, see, see stuff. So if there's no other questions, we're going to look at wrapping it up. Is there any, anyone got any other questions before we, uh, before we tie it up? No, all good. Well, I thank you everybody for attending. Apologies for cutting out halfway through, but um, yeah, it's, it's got to be a first this doing a webinar on the move. Uh, but but we've done it, we've accomplished it. Um, so until next week, uh, Vision. If you obviously you, you, you're looking at that demo and put it into your app and so on, so that's uh, oh, it should work for you fine. I did lots of testing on it and it. Yeah, it looks it went, great. Thank you. It went really well and did the date ranges and yeah, yeah, it should be very That's simple. Cool. The only thing you Perfect. should really change is just one embed point of loading the loading the data. That's all you should really yes. have to change. Um, John, I will have a look at the PDF um, soonish, uh, but I'll get you your other sample application first so you can, you can at least get that to the customer and try it on their site. Okay, sounds good. Okay, Thanks, until next thank week. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.